Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so thrilled that you have joined me once again today. Um, and this week, I have a great guest on with me. Her name is Laura Molitier, and you're going to love her. I know many of you may already be familiar with her and her ministry, and so I'm going to let her talk to you about that. Um, but thank you for joining me again today. You know, we tell you guys all the time that we pray for you, and we really do. We pray for our audience. We pray for the homeschool community. We pray for um, especially those who are just getting started with homeschooling this year and trying to figure out what this looks like in your home and what it looks like for your kids and for your marriage and for your family. And it's, it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to take in, um, but we are here to help. <laughs> so um, Laura, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Yvette. Yes, I am thrilled to have you with me. Um, tell us about you, you and your family and your ministry and what God has called you to. So um, I am the blogger behind Everyday Grace's Homeschool, and we've been around for a while, and we're a home of the Homeschool Garden, which is a Charlotte Mason-inspired morning time curriculum, and the Cultivating Grace podcast, where we discuss all kinds of things that relate to homeschooling and motherhood and all things Charlotte Mason. I have a precious husband and two very precocious boys that keep me on my toes and on my knees. And uh, in in the downtime that I do have, you'll find me usually reading books and drinking copious amounts of caffeinated tea. Nice. <laughs> now, do you drink sweet tea or unsweet tea? Oh, no, I drink hot tea. <laughs> oh, you drink hot tea. Okay. I do. I do. I'm one of those weird Southern people that drinks hot stuff all year long. <laughs> well, I drink hot tea too in the morning and I put creamer in mine. You want to know my weird combination? I know this, people are going to think I'm crazy. I like to drink peppermint green tea with vanilla creamer. Is that weird? It sounds like a <laughs> latte. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's what gets me up and wakes me up in the morning. Um, so that is my favorite thing. And my favorite creamer is from Trader Joe's, um, in case anybody wants to know. Their vanilla creamer. I love it. I have. To, I, I do nut pods because I can't do dairy, but um, ah. I like their French vanilla in Earl Grey. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I love tea. I'm not a coffee drinker. I never have been. I I, I mean, it tastes okay to me, but you know, it's, I'd rather have tea with cream, British style. <laughs> Just seems <laughs> right. That's how it should be. Anyway, um, I am so glad to have you with me today. And I'm really excited about our topic today. You have a workshop that's called Making Your Home a Haven. And so we're going to talk about making your home school a haven today. And I, as I've been looking through your workshop that you do on this in your notes, I was so encouraged, um, even just for myself, because it's something that I think we as moms need to be reminded of constantly. We have to be intentional about making our home a haven for our family. And, and we as the moms have a whole lot of control and power in doing that. And so one of the verses that I know you you refer to in this uh, that I'm going to read is Proverbs 14, 1. And it says, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. And there are a lot of verses in the Bible that talk to moms, that talk to women. And this is one of the most powerful, I think, because it really helps us to understand how much power we really do have as moms and as wives. And so I would love for you to talk to us about how we can go about making our home a haven. And what are some of the steps that you help moms take in order to be able to do that in our home? So um, that was a great introduction. Thank you. It, it's one of my favorite workshops. Um, and, and I really like to be able to do it um, in person as well, because then we can really sort of hash out the details. But when you think about a haven, um, you know, th there are so many references in the Bible to safety and to the Lord being our safety, you know, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, um, being underneath his wings. We have this concept of security that we get from the Lord, and we want to be able to reflect that directly in our homes to our children. Hmm. We want them to be able to feel that safety and that security and that love and, um, we are really the first representation that they get from the time they are born of the heavenly father's love that's coming down to them through us. Um, and it's, it's really just, um, it's imperative, especially in today's world, because there is so much darkness right. and there is so much grief and anger. 
we have the agency given to us to create a space where our children can love and learn and worship and we can guide them in the way that they should go and we should we can train them and we can teach them and we have all the tools in the world Mm -hmm. that we need. um, Even if we only have like, you know, a tiny two bedroom apartment, making a Haven isn't so much about having, you know, the big house and the Pinterest perfect decor. It's really a reflection of, you know, mom and dad. And because we are the ones in charge of the homeschooling most of the time and the children are with us usually 24 (laughs) seven, our, our attitude is a huge part of what makes our home into a haven. And there are a lot of different things that kind of play into that. But um, the way I always start my workshop is um, just a couple little questions. If you have note takers listening, this is probably a good time for them to kind of grab a little piece of paper and jot some things down. But um, we go through a process of why do I want to create a haven? It's important that we know, you know, why we want to do something, because that's really what's going to guide us in staying the course to actually doing it (laughs) and not just having a lofty goal that's more of a wish because there's no action plan there. So five words to describe my home currently. And most of us, um, most of us have things that we want to change about our home. We, um, we may have laundry piles that overwhelm us. We, um, we may have a lot of disagreements between siblings right now. Um, that is certainly something that we would want to work on. We may have um, just sort of tension because everything's been canceled. <laughs> right. Um, you know, you and I were talking about that a minute ago. There's just, there's so many, um, so many things that we are used to that we are, um, that we would consider normal right? that are just not happening. And so that does create a tension and we have to be very aware of that, but there, um, there may be a lot more dirty dishes in the sink than usual because nobody's going to get takeout right now. But whatever, um, whatever your five words are, whether it's, um, you know, chaos or dirty or argumentative, whatever five words describe your home. And you may actually be in a really good season. And sometimes, you know, we, we do, we go through cycles. Um, you may be in a season where your home is restful, where your home is full of laughter and joyful. And um, that's awesome too. But there's always one or two areas that we're going to want to really kind of hone in on and make better. And then we go to five words that would describe my ideal home. Um, For me, grace-filled is always one of the things that comes to mind. And I feel like that's such a process that I can always put that one down Um, because I I want us to be full of grace. I want us to be showing mercy and kindness and love to each other. I want me not to be stressed out for any reason so that that's not what comes, you know, flowing out of my mouth when I'm talking to my children. Um, I want our home to be restful. I want us to really, um, to really practice the, the practice of Shabbat. We, we need that rest. We need that day. The Lord gave us a command to rest and there is a reason for that. And moms, we are so bad not to take that time. Yeah. You know, mom, moms, we, we neglect the rest Yep. (laughs) and then we neglect the rest. Um, and everything else just sort of falls apart because we're overwhelmed and, tired and grumpy and things just get out of hand. Um, And so we move from our five words for our ideal home to what will my family gain from cultivating my ideal home? Mm. And this one is where we kind of have to dig a little bit deeper because our surface answers are always going to be something like, well, you know, I want my home to be cleaner because I want to be able to have people over. What you really want is not to, uh, not to feel pressured to practice the art of hospitality, Um, you know, and, and who knows, you know, your dirty house may still welcome people that are angels and you're just unaware of it. We, we have all of these, you know, amazing, easy ways to fix things. We can go to the grocery store and pick up cookies. It's not like, you know, our, our grandmoms had to bake things, right? (laughs) We, we have shortcuts. And so, um, I think, I think we need to remember that we can use those and we don't have to feel bad about serving somebody toll house cookies with a cup of coffee out of the Keurig Mm -hmm. just because it didn't come out of our oven. That doesn't mean there's not still love behind it. Right. 
And we have these overarching ideals, I think, to have sort of, um, especially as homeschoolers, do you ever have the the Ma Ingalls ideals? Oh, yes. All the time. <laughs> yes. And so so we want we want that whole um, prairie like mm-hmm. experience. And, and we aren't really set up as a culture to do that anymore. Um, not that we shouldn't be. Right. But, it's, um, you know, when, when we have hospitality, our children get their friends to play with. When we mm-hmm. exercise hospitality, we have mom time. And, you know, right. there is a glory and a graciousness in having friends, especially um, especially Titus, two women that will, mm-hmm. you know, speak life into you. And then, you know, where we're kind of further down the road in the homeschooling thing, we have an opportunity to actually become those Titus II women. And right. so it's really important to model that for our children. Um, when we have a cleaner home and we're a little bit less stressed, um, our, our family is going to be happier and we're going to be happier. Part of that sometimes means getting rid of things. Um, I'm not a minimalist though. Uh, I, I have entirely too many books to ever be considered a minimalist. Books, books don't count. That's right. Books, books don't count. No, only things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and a lot of our things are like, you know, nature shelves. Right. And my children wouldn't let me get rid of those anyway. <laughs> so our family really benefits from us cultivating our ideal home. And so do we. We, um, we allow ourselves to be servants. Mm-hmm. And that thing I think that's um, that our culture in general has really sort of made taboo, but there is um, you, you get so much more by serving your family and by serving your friends and by serving the people that the Lord puts in your path than you ever get from just taking care of yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, I think when we're talking about cultivating our home environment, it's really important to remember that it's an act of service. And it's also an act of service to the Lord. And when we keep our homes joyfully, even when it's being joyful over, you know, cleaning up the muddy footprints or the dirty laundry or the broken dishes or the sticks that got left in the living room again, it's um, it's an act of worship when we do it because he gave this to us. He gave us these um, these souls to look after just for a little while. They're lent to us. Um, and it's it's a blessing to have it's a blessing to have the dirty dishes. It's a blessing to have the kids tracking the mud in. And so when we sort of flip the script for what, you know, the world is telling us, you know, you need all this time for you. You need to be on the couch and watching Bon Bon or eating Bon Bon and watching Netflix. Like it's just, who does that? Um, So it's, it's really important to, um, to remember that this is a service and being able to serve is a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like it when you're right there in the middle of it, but it is, it's a blessing. And so when we sort of change our view of what it is that we are called to do, um, Goethe has a fabulous quote, um, but it's, uh, it talks about cease endlessly striving for what you would like to do and learn to love what must be done. Mm. Say that again. Cease endlessly striving for what you would like to do and learn to love what must be done. Yeah. And it's, it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful thing to kind of keep there in the back of your head um, and pull that out when you're starting to feel a little irritable that, you know, there's yet another load of laundry because you just spent 30 minutes putting clothes away. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just, it's a great, um, it's a great reminder too. Like when you're scrubbing the baseboards for spring cleaning, um, that, that dust came from people coming in and out of the house and, you know, it's, it's a good thing to have all those people there. Um, Yeah. And well, what it all comes down to is perspective. And that's really what you're saying is it yes. comes down to what is your perspective of your current situation um, and the current season that you are dealing with. Um, you know, you mentioned it's, it's different things change, you know, sometimes we have a new baby coming into the house. Sometimes we are, you know, like this year, we're entering into the high school years. And so it's a very, very different season for us now than it was 10 years ago when I was getting ready to have a baby, you know, it's just completely um, flip-flopped. And now my girls are capable of doing things that they couldn't do when they were younger, but that brings a whole new slew of challenges and teaching different things to them and stuff. Um, And it's, it's fun stuff, but it really is about perspective and how we see what it is that the Lord has placed in front of us. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and talk more about this. 
Did you miss the 2020 Homegrown Generation Family Expo? If so, you can now have full access to the entire expo for just $10. You'll enjoy practical homeschooling encouragement, advice, and resources from many of your favorite homeschool leaders, including Kurt Cameron, Heidi St. John, Andrew Pudua, Rachel Carmen, Dorinda Wilson, and many more. Here are just a few of the testimonials from those who have enjoyed this online conference. Rachel said, best homeschool conference I have ever attended, filled my soul and definitely God-driven. Katie said, this was absolutely amazing. I've been so encouraged and blessed. The one thing that stood out to me about each session is that every single one pointed us back to Jesus, back to Him who is faithful. And another homeschool mom said, thank you so much for all the value provided at this price. We are a big family with a super tight budget. My husband was encouraged, the boys listened in too. A relief to find this resource at such an affordable price with so much value. Register today for lifetime access to the entire conference for only $10 at homegrowngeneration.com. That's homegrowngeneration.com. We are back with Laura and we are, I said Laura, I always want to say Laura, it's Laura. Right. That's why you talked about Little House because you want to be like Laura Ingalls. And I also want to be like the Ingalls family. I if for, for those who don't know, that is my favorite book series in all the land. Like if I could if I were stranded on a desert island and I could take three books with me, it would be the Bible, the hiding place, and the little house series. Cause I consider the series one book, right? <laughs> So I think it's fair. Anyway, yeah, That's I awesome. love it. And, and I, I want to, I, I was just telling my girls this the other day. I said, I want to live just like the Ingalls lived, except I want electricity and flushing toilets. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I like the hygiene. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and a shower. Uh, but that goes with the toilet and, you know, the, a bathroom. I want a bathroom. Running, running water. Running water. Yes. Running, yes. I, I want running to filtered that. water. <laughs> Right. Yes. I want the simple life with no computers, nothing but books, but, but I want more books than what they had available to them there. So anyway, yeah. that, <laughs> that's a bit <laughs> of a rabbit trail. Anyhow, back to um, cultivating our ideal home. And I, so I love that you talk about using those five words to describe, because I think when we sometimes sit down and we actually think through, so like we feel oftentimes like, there's chaos surrounding us, but we don't know what to do about it. We don't know how to handle the chaos. We don't know how to change it, but we know something needs to change. And so that's such a simple step of being able to just sit down and just write down, like, what are five words, you know, the first five, maybe that come to your mind of what describes your home and then write five things of what you would like your home to look like. And you know, as homes go on, one of the thing, things I always want to be careful of is that we never come on here and we're like, we have we have it all figured out. We have this entire homeschool thing and this entire, you know, uh, mom and housekeeper thing figured out. And our house is always perfectly tidy and clean. And our children always sit so perfectly at the table and get up with smiles on their faces. And we never have piles of laundry. I mean, that's just not realistic. <laughs> no, not at, all. not at all. But we have to have goals. I mean, we have to have something to strive for because if we're not going in a direction that that is honoring to our family and honoring to the Lord, we can just get derailed in a million different directions. And that's where the chaos comes in is where we don't know which direction to go. So we don't go any direction at all. And so I really like that um, idea of writing those five words of how it you would describe it and then five words of what you would like Um what are some practical ways that you see for moms to be able to implement things? Because I know for myself, oftentimes I'll think, well, I want to do this. I'll want to implement this particular practice in our home or in our homeschool or with my girls and maybe their chores and responsibilities, things like that. But then sometimes I have a really hard time knowing exactly how to implement those things, or I try to implement it. And I think this is going to work great. And it works for like one day and then it completely falls apart. And I'm like, man, it seemed like such a good idea. <laughs> Why did that not work? Um, have you found some practical ways to implement what we're wanting our home to look like compared to what it actually looks like? Yes. Um, there are, there are a lot of actually um, tips and tricks in Proverbs 31. And I refer to her lovingly as the woman we all love to hate. Right. <laughs> because she just seems to have it all together. Um, right. 
but what people what people tend to not look at, like this is talking about a woman's life. This is not talking about, you know, this is everything she does in a week. This is right. talking about her life. And right. so um, I also, it was only a few years ago that I learned when it says she's giving a portion to her handmaids, it isn't talking about her feeding them breakfast. She's telling them what to do for the day. Mm, right. She had servants. I mean, that, that yeah, is part of it yeah. is that she actually had um, servants. She People who had, and I, I don't even know if servants is the right word, um, but she had assistants. <laughs> yes. And so we, we do too. We don't realize it for the most mm -hmm. part, but we do too. So we have dishwashers. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, washing machines. We have dryers. If you have a Roomba, you're like way up here. You're, you're gold. <laughs> we have, we have children and um, children need to learn to work. Yep. Um, that is, that is part of our responsibility as their parents. We are teaching them to have a good work ethic. Right. So when your children are old enough to empty the dishwasher or to load the dishwasher or to bring the towels up and even to help fold the towels. And if you're like me, sometimes, sometimes the way they fold the towels makes you kind of just cringe, Right. <laughs> But they are learning mm -hmm. and they are helping. And so if you have to fix them, don't fix them when the children can see you. Right. <laughs> um, but we um, we implemented from a very early age. And it's something you can teach your kids no matter how old they are. But we started getting our children to help, mm -hmm. um, especially because, you know, my husband has crazy hours. I work and we homeschool. And so it's just um, it was impractical. Mm -hmm. not to teach the children how to help. Right. But also using the things that we do have access to. We came up with a system where every night the dishwasher is loaded and run before bed, even if it's only two thirds full, because mm -hmm. in the morning it can then be emptied and right. all those dishes are clean. And then throughout the day it gets loaded again. Um, we taught the children how to put away their laundry um, when they were, I don't know, maybe four or five. Mm -hmm. They're, 10 and eight now, and they still complain about it, <laughs> but they do it. Yeah. Oh, mom, just be thankful. You have clean clothes. Right. That's so, right. It's um, all about perspective. It is. So, you know, it's, it's just the little systems that you put in place. I make sure that all of our shoes are on the shoe shelf before I go to bed at night. Um, I make sure that on uh, Sunday afternoons, I portion out breakfast for the week. So we have the little baggies and we just portion out our cereal or oatmeal or whatever we're having for that week that goes in there. I have snack drawers for my kids. So they know which store to get a two o'clock snack out of and which one they can get a 10 a.m. snack out of. Um, I'm not a batch cooker. I would mm -hmm. like to be right. <laughs> I would it's like to be, theory. <laughs> but, um, but having just a general meal plan. And this is something that, um, we actually have this in one of our planners. It's 10 easy meals. I have a list that I keep of 10 super simple meals. I always keep those ingredients in my pantry. One of them is what was for dinner tonight. Um, but, you know, like pasta with meat sauce, mm -hmm. something we always have on hand. We always have the jar of sauce. We always have pasta. We always have ground beef that I can thaw out really quick in the sink or in the microwave if I forget to pull it out the night before. But we've got, um, we've got that. There's several soups but just 10 easy meals that I know my family's not going to complain about that take mm -hmm. less than 30 minutes to make. Um, that was really helpful as far as like, you know, the nights that I don't want to cook. Right. <laughs> we That's every those. night for me. Yeah. But <laughs> continuing on. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, you, you find the, the points that are your pain points. Right. So cooking sometimes by the end of the day after homeschooling and, you know, getting my afternoon work hours in, I don't like cooking. So that 10 easy meals was a checklist for me mm -hmm. to know, you know, you know, if I want to make a quiche, I always have eggs. I always have a frozen pie crust. I always have like bacon bits and spinach that I can throw in there with it. Whatever is your pain point. If it's doing the dishes, if you, if you wake up to a dirty kitchen and it just ruins your morning. Um, and I am a lot that way. <laughs> it yep. shouldn't, but you know, you get up and there's sure. a mess. Right. Because so, you're stepping into chaos first thing yes. in the morning. So getting yourself into the habit and we have to get in the habits first. That's the hard part. Right. We have to get into the habits before we can teach our children the habits. Right. 
so we get in the habit of cleaning the kitchen, making sure the children are trained to load the dishwasher and that we put our own stuff in there. Yep. Um, my mom was a bed maker. She could not stand for people's beds not to be made up. That was just her trigger point. So she taught us from a very early age. That's what we do. You get mm -hmm. up in the morning and you make your bed before you go do anything else. Um, and so that it, it's just kind of whatever your pain points are that make you feel um, assaulted as soon as you get up. <laughs> we, yeah. we know there's going to be things throughout the day coming at us, but if sure. you get up and you know that that's your pain point, yeah. that's where you want to start. Um, yeah. So I would recommend all of us pretty well know, I think by this point, what it is. Like if it's that your Keurig is empty, right? Oh, <laughs> yep. If your fill Keurig water. needs water, fill up the water yep. before you go to bed and yep. you end up, you end up with, you know, I think at the end of the day, it usually takes me about 20 minutes to go through all the little steps. I want to make mm -hmm. sure, you know, everything's ready for in the morning. I want to make sure there is water in the Keurig. I want to make sure the boys have breakfast out in case they get up really early before the sun comes up because sometimes they do that. Um, I want to make sure my kitchen is clean. And generally it does. Now it takes me about 20 minutes. Now, when I first started going through all that, mm -hmm. it would take an hour. Yeah. And so you have to be willing to give yourself time to learn how to sure. put your systems in place. Um, I have never followed the fly lady systems, but I've heard amazing things oh, about yeah. them for people who want to really just like get everything in their, you know, get their ducks in a row. Right. Yeah. I have yeah. rabbits. I haven't well. heard of fly lady for such a long time. And years ago when Brooklyn was a baby, um, that was the first time I ever was introduced to the fly lady. And she literally, um, I'll put a link to her book. Um, but it changed, it changed so much of my world of, of chaos and mess in my home because one, she taught me how to kind of minimalize things. Like I remember um, standing in my kitchen and looking through my cupboards. This is one of the things she taught and just like going through like, what don't I need in here? And I had like, you know, I don't know, five Pyrex dishes that were all the same size because we got them for our wedding. And like, I couldn't even use all five of them if I wanted to at the same time, because my oven wouldn't even possibly fit all five of them. <laughs> Right. And so, you know, just getting rid of things like that. And then I actually got to fit my fine china. My my grandmother handed down to me this beautiful set of fine Noritake china. And I got to fit it in my kitchen cabinets for the first time ever in my marriage. And I was so excited because I'd gotten rid of all this stuff. And now I was able to use my china, which was such a blessing to me because then we used it for holidays and birthdays and even just when we want to have a nice dinner. Um but it does take time. Like you said, you have to be intentional about it and just take baby steps. You can't change everything overnight all at once. And you have to work yourself into a system. You talked about laundry. Uh, we had Christy Clover on the podcast several, uh, a few months ago. And she was talking about, uh, you know, organize, organization. You know, she has her book, Mom, Master Organizer of Mayhem. And, um, and it, it's such a good book. And she talks in there about laundry. And one of the things after having her on the podcast that we instituted was my girls started doing their own laundry and they're uh, eight and 14. And they, they did help me with laundry all the time, but we would have our big pile of laundry and then they would help to fold that pile. Well, what happened was she said, well, I just have my kids do their own laundry. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. So <laughs> I went out that week, I went out and bought them each their own individual hamper and now they're responsible but what's great about it is they learn responsibility because when they run out of clean clothes well it's on them <laughs> that's on you you need to pay attention to when you need to do your laundry and they've really learned oh you know i only have one more clean pair of shorts so i better wash my clothes today so that tomorrow i have a clean outfit to wear um but it, it is such a great way to be able to teach our kids responsibility one of the things that we did this year just a couple weeks ago, I instituted this in our, um, I have a checklist for my girls every day for their schoolwork. And I actually included on their checklist, take initiative, because I nice. want them to learn to take initiative to do things that they're not being told to do. You know, I can tell them, go do the dishes, go sweep the floors, go do this, go do that. But I want them to look around them every single day. So it's been great because it's on their list. So they have to just go around and figure out if it's laundry or dishes or cleaning the bathroom or whatever. It's one of their daily things is to just take initiative because I want that to be instilled in them as responsible human beings right? <laughs> to be able to 
take initiative and not have to wait to be told what to do. So we are out of time though. Um, I'm looking at the clock right now and I'm like, oh my goodness, we're out of time for part one. Um, but we're going to be back on Wednesday and we will continue on this conversation about making your home a haven. Um, Laura, real quick, where can people find out more about you? Um, you can find us at everydaygraceshomeschool.com and you can find us on Instagram at Laura's Place. It's L-A-R-A-S, Laura's Place. Um, and then we are also on Facebook under Everyday Graces Homeschool. Awesome. And we'll link to those in the show notes. So thank you so much, Laura. We will be back on Wednesday to continue our conversation.